Hey guys, it's Ghosty. Welcome back to my channel. And today I'm going to be talking about the Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie from 1974 and the Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie from 2003. It's no secret that Toby Hooper's Texas Chainsaw Massacre from 1974 is a staple in the genre. It personally wasn't an all-time favorite until this most recent watch, but I've always respected the movie for what it is. I hadn't seen the 2003 remake since it came out years ago, and I remember liking it a lot. I was excited to revisit this movie now that my love for horror is a little bit different. Talking about these two films are unlike any other other films that I've compared and contrasted on my channel already. The remake is just so different from the original film. It seems like majority of the similarities between the two come down to the homages that the remake pays to the original film. Other than that, they are two different films. Honestly, it feels like this team wanted to make a movie and tie it to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise. I'm not sure if it was money or because they enjoyed the franchise so much. A lot of differences here. One of the nods that I particularly noticed while watching the remake from 2003 is all of Leatherface's entrances are sudden jump scares. First time we see Leatherface in the original film from 1974 when he pops up in the house and behind a steel door and strikes one of the main male characters and later on in the film when he makes his reappearance with Sally and Franklin it's another one of those they're just in the woods and then oh here comes Leatherface in the remake all of his entrances are like that aside from one where he's kind of called on Bring it. very first entrance we do get that sliding steel door the strike with the sledgehammer very similar to the first one leatherface also makes use of a meat hook in both films to hang one of his victims and there is a woods chase scene in both films so he's chasing the final girl through the woods each movie opens with the same monologue and when you're watching the remake you almost think like oh wow they're really 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 remaking this but that's the only verbatim thing that is in the remake at the end of the monologue in the remake they changed the ending of it added some stuff to the narrative which i don't really think was a good idea but it was a choice they made it but i do like that they at least open with that because i feel like the opening credits and that monologue in the original film is amazing. The pictures, the sound effects, the music in the original one is just so perfect. Another scene that is very similar between the two films is that iconic shot. It's like an undershot, the house and her butt. In the original, it's of the character Pam. They do recreate that shot with Jessica Biel's character Aaron in their remake. Both films have a similar premise. A group of teenage kids are driving through Texas and are being hunted by a family that just so happened to be the only people in this town. The final girl does survive in both movies. That was the only thing I remember about the remake before rewatching it. In both movies, the group of kids do pick up a hitchhiker. Things go very differently for both films and I'll get there. There is at least a hitchhiker and there's also a truck driver that kind of saves the day at the end of both films as well. So the remake's plot is so different. It is so different. It really starts with them picking up this hitchhiker. In the original one, the hitchhiker is actually a part of the family that is trying to fuck them up. I can't remember his name, but he's a weird dude. He's so weird. He's very off-putting. They get a sense that he's weird. He cuts himself and he sets, he tries to set the van on fire and they kick him out and they're just like, man, fuck that dude. He's so fucking weird. Like, why did we do that? And then we have the hitchhiker in the remake. She's weird as well, but it's not like her personality. It's not her character. It's like, she just looks fucked up, dehydrated, sick. Immediately, Jessica Biel's character, Aaron, who is the final girl, is just like, we have to save this girl. They take her in and they start driving, passing through what one could assume the area of where Leatherface and his family resides in and she starts freaking out and she kills herself. This creates this whole 
subplot that is not in the original film. Fuck, we have a dead body, we have to hide it. Not a fan of that. They argue over what to do with this dead body twice in two different scenes. The shot itself, watching that was great because it was shocking. I think the way that they filmed that and directed that was very creative. You go through the perspective of through the hole in the head. That shit was fucking cool, but it did nothing for the rest of the movie. It just made me hate these characters more because let me fucking tell you, I hate these fucking characters. They are not the same characters from the original movie. We have Jedediah. There's a baby that they stole. The baby was a part of the hitchhiker's family. There's two women that are staying in a trailer in the area. Not really sure the relation to the Hewitts, but they exist. There's this matriarch's mother character, which we did not get in the first one. And the original one is very male dominant energy. And once we're introduced to Leatherface and we're introduced to the hitchhiker and the sheriff, and I'm pretty sure he was at the gas station in the original. Once we are reintroduced to them as the villains in this movie, it shifts from the teenagers being the main characters to this family. And we really get to see their dynamic. It's very male oriented we have the grandfather the dad and his two sons which is leatherface and the hitchhiker but in this remake we have this matriarch you could tell that she she's running shit she keeps her boys in check another difference between the characters as far as the family between the remake and the original is they are so sinister in the remake they are angry they are mean leatherface is sinister as fuck in this one and he's not like that in their original one. They like scaring people. They're in this for the scares. And that makes sense for where horror was at the time. The original is actually kind of funny because the family, they're just weirdos and they're stupid. They're bad people, but they're not evil. They're just like fucking around. To them, it's just like fun, like playing a prank. It's a terrible prank. That's what it feels like. As far as the main cast of teenagers, the chemistry in the first one is amazing. We have Sally, her brother Franklin, Sally's boyfriend, Jerry. I think that's her boyfriend. I know there's a guy named Jerry. I don't remember if that's her boyfriend or not. And then there's Pam and Pam's boyfriend, Andy. Andy might be Sally's boyfriend. That's the main cast. The banter in the car while they're driving through Texas is entertaining. It doesn't feel forced. The remake, we have Aaron and her boyfriend Kemper. Weird ass name. Morgan. I don't know if he's related to anybody, but he's there. Then we have, oh, maybe Andy's in the new one. I don't remember if Andy's in the new one or the remake, but we have another guy. <laughs> There's actually another hitchhiker that's a part of their group, but we don't see them pick her up. They just say like, oh, we picked her up. And her name is something weird. Peaches Pepper. They just don't do it for me. There's dialogue that tries to be funny and it's not. Also, Jessica Bill can't act. I don't know how she is now. I haven't seen a movie with her in it like recent years. I think the last thing I saw her in was like Valentine's Day in 2010 or nine. <laughs> her acting in this movie is so bad, not good at all. I don't know how she got this final girl role. I don't hate her. I just, yeah, not not great. I don't love these characters. Logan Face is more of a star in this movie than he was in the original, which makes sense because by 2003, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre was a franchise and he was the face for this franchise. So we get scenes of him doing his craft. We see him in the original one. It's not about him. It's definitely a family thing. I hate Sinister Leatherface. I like to think of Leatherface as just like, he's just sweet and he's just trying his best and he's a softy. Like if I were to ever be a serial killer, I would be Leatherface. I'd be trapped in this fucking weird ass family that likes to kill people. Then boom, next thing you know, I'm wearing a mask and killing people because I don't know how to tell people no. Cause I really do have an issue with telling people no. I mean, I have boundaries, but if you're raised in certain environments where you don't learn how to create boundaries, I could totally see how you could create a pushover serial killer like Leatherface. I thought it was really interesting that the remake decide to set this movie in the 70s because they didn't show that at all. They put this like sepia fucking filter over it and the costume design is just like trash. They look like a bunch of kids from the 2000s. They do not look like 70s kids. They totally could have just made this in current times but they didn't. Because they wanted to push this whole 70s aesthetic it just makes this film feel so inauthentic whereas the original feels real. I've heard some people say that it felt like a snuff film at the time and real and bleak. The aesthetic in the original film is just amazing. I'm biased, I love 70s films in general. The use of the sun 
in the original film as lighting amazing uh, especially because the location is in Texas. All in all, the original is definitely the superior film. I feel like the remake is polarizing. There's some people that think it's a pretty substantial one. I personally just can't. I think it's possible to make a great remake, but that is not, that is not how you do that. And I tried really hard not to spend majority of this video bashing the remake, but I just wasn't too happy with it. It was entertaining to say the least and all the shots with Leatherface, amazing. I loved every time Leatherface came on screen, I was really here for it. I gave the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre five stars on Letterboxd and it's currently sitting at 3.9 stars on Letterboxd. I gave the remake of Texas Chainsaw Massacre two and a half stars on Letterboxd and it's currently sitting at 2.8 stars on Letterboxd. Thanks guys for watching this video. If you liked it, you can give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to watch my future content. You you can always hit the bell to be notified whenever I release a new video. You can follow me on social media. I'm at Instagram at Disco Llama, Twitter at Ghosty, and Letterboxd at Ghosty. Thanks, we'll see you guys in the next video.